Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Dudes on a Couch. Queezies, we're playing through Flower. This is uh, episode four, part four, something like that. Uh, yeah, we're on uh, level four here with, with Mo. Hello. And it's nighttime. This is my second favorite song on the soundtrack. It's very relaxing and nice, and it feels like night. It's very enjoyable. Oh, but yeah, uh, the last episode I was talking about, um, this guy, Steve Reich, um, he did this music called... It was based off of like phasing where you have two similar tracks that are played on top of each other, but one's like slightly faster. So they start to get off time. Kind of like when you're at like a stoplight and you see a blinker in front of you and it gets in sync with your blinker, but then they slowly get off of each other and then they slowly get back on time. And it's a really good way that, to explain that, that. moment. Yeah. Uh, well, that's phasing. And he did it with like, like speeches and audio tracks first, which was very disturbing. But then he did it with um, uh, marimbas. And like percussive instruments, percussion instruments. And he came out with um, a couple of albums. One was, um, or compositions. Everyone check out, I think it's called Music for 18 Musicians. Um, my like mentor back in high school sent it to me and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, I always listen to it when I'm studying because it has this constant pulse behind it with this super lovely, like ambient sound to it where it's 18 musicians some of them are playing like marimbas and other instruments of the like. Others are playing like clarinets. Um, just really like relaxing, um, like good timbre instruments, I guess you could say. Uh, super relaxing, but has a pulse behind it. So you can like keep doing your thing. Kind of like this music. Like right now you have that constant piano. just doom, 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 That kind of keeps you moving. But everything else is super calming behind it. So it's, you don't get anxious. You know, it's not that anxious type of feeling. It was very much like the last level. That soundtrack was very reminiscent of it. But it's so much... This looks amazing. Oh, my God. This is really cool. Am like I the just, lighting? I'm just painting this area, I guess. Yeah. But this is always fun. I mean, I guess since I've been playing a bunch of indie games and we've played through a couple now, um, it starts to become a more obvious thing. Like, you have color, and then once you run out of ideas for color and different uh, color schemes you then jump over to playing with light and dark. So obviously nighttime, instead of the grass being dead, the grass is dark. And you run over flowers, instead of them being dead, they're just not lit up. And then you go over them and light them up. So it's like, it still looks brilliant. <clears throat> it just, I don't know, I guess it becomes a little more obvious and less clever when you play like a million of these in a row. <laughs> but it looks brilliant. And like the, having the yellow, the yellow light, so I find it interesting, like, they've kind of showed the city in the beginning as kind of like the enemy, like the, the yeah. drab sort of place. Yep. And now I thought, like, the flower thing was kind of like, let's escape from this idea of the city. And now we, we had windmills in the last one, and now mm -hmm. we have light poles in this one. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is, like, bringing us back to the city. Well... Actually, so I haven't played through this game. I've seen bits and parts of it. So I think it's supposed to be like, this is what nature is. You know, it's supposed to get you or be or remind you what nature is actually like. It's very pleasant. It's very, <laughs> for yeah, lack but of a better the, word, we've natural. got hay bales here. Yeah, I mean, but like, this is still like nature to people, you know. Um, but also, this is the first time we've seen like man-made things with the exception of the windmills. But the windmills over there, you can see, are man-made but supposed to be uh not as obtrusive or obstructive as other things like the city it's like now as we go through the levels we're seeing more man-made stuff like hay bales lights structures electricity um and the city is all supposed to be like detrimental to like nature right it's something that takes away from it and i guess this is supposed to be maybe um i don't know save the nature like nature conservatory type of, oh, man. Type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? I have so many issues with this. Why? Well, I mean, like, I, I think the, the artistic sort of composition of it is really cool, mm -hmm. right? Like, he's got this sort of idea of, like, hey, let's kind of, like, give this idea of old country. <laughs> hey. We're out in the moon. Yeah, hey, oh, just like, let's just go out in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of me. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like that's that sort, sort of thing of, like, this is the representation of what I think he feels better than the city is like living out in the country that's meaningful, but it's kind of muddied by that sort of aspect of like the city isn't, isn't necessarily a place that you can find this sort of peace and stuff. Like, I mean, 
go to Boston Commons out here. And if you've ever been there on like a beautiful day, um, or even on a rainy day, it's gorgeous. Yeah, but I, I think it's, it's this is getting back to the whole concept of like um, man-made structures and cities take away from green spaces. No, they do. They, no, they, they do. They Get can. They can. Well, there's already been right, but well, you can have yeah. mixture of both. Like there's there's um. No, you you can, but the whole thing is like, well, for example, now we have like global warming and what's contributing to it, and I guess that's what this game is kind of getting at is that a lot of. Um, Oh, it looks so nice. A lot of things that are bad to nature come from cities and cityscapes because you're getting rid of it. You don't have these like lights out type of areas where you can look up at night and see the stars. You go out in the city and you look up at night, you see like one or two. You're going to see. So here's here's the thing. Like there's I'm I think about this stuff a lot. Right. Because it's like urban urban design um, and architecture. Um as like the population increases, we all kind of like need to a be close to each other because it's difficult to um, have like communities and stuff, and it's also more economical. Like if you actually have um, a farm, bringing the the food from a farm into the city is really expensive. But having a farm inside of a warehouse, which isn't something that I think most people would necessarily consider, but is becoming more increasingly um, a viable solution to having like produce and green in like a urban sprawl mm-hmm. um, is actually becoming more a reasonable thing. And and not only that, but it's it's more cost effective. You don't have to use as much water. You don't have to use pesticide because you're able to climate control stuff inside stuff. There's a MIT professor named um, Neri Oxman. And I think like some people might've seen her in the news because she was like rumored to be dating Brad Pitt. <laughs> was that true? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. She's, she's, she's beautiful too. You just like look up uh, like a picture of her. She's just like this really intelligent woman. Um, Don't fuck it up, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think it, the they the the rumor was that they weren't together. I think she ended up marrying um, uh, an investment banker um, and recently had a kid. But the if you look up her stuff, like in her designs for how they mix greenery with architecture, it's stunning. Like it's 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 a sort of vision of the future. Like if you look back at um, Walt Disney, like when he was building Walt Disney World. And he was designing Epcot, which stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's this idea of, of bringing together like um, urban architecture, human invention, innovation with like uh, a synergy with the environment in place where you're not destroying the world while you're moving things forward. What am I supposed to do here? Uh, go the other way. Go to the left. Head out that way. You just gotta follow the lights. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you're talking about? It's like, oh, they're just saying, here's the bright spot. You gotta go there. I you see. Go, yeah, to the yeah. left. To the left. Um, unless you already did that, then you go back. I did this one. Okay, so go back the other way. Yeah, straight out that way. Is that that one? Maybe that one we should do? No, I already did that one. Keep going straight. Maybe there's something out there. To the left. I feel like we didn't straight, light up this straight. thing. This thing. I mean, do a little loop. I think I already did because it did the uh, little cinematic cut. It like took the camera back. Yeah, go to the left over that fence. Is there anything over here? Yeah, because you see how the, the light roads. string carries yeah. all the way. Well, this is like another thing like where I'm saying like this game doesn't really direct you as well. And it also... <laughs> Which is kind of ironic because this totally looks like you're controlling Navi from, um, <laughs> from Zelda. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to go, hey! See, did you see what it just did there? Like, where it went, uh, and it, like, held me. It's now holding me in this place. Oh, maybe because you can't go out that way. No. Oh, I can't. Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. But it's nice. The music's nice. It looks nice. Just enjoy yourself, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> um... I mean, just oh, that's why. That's I gotta paint this. I didn't paint this all. Ah. You gotta turn on the lights. There we go. Cool. Oh, have you seen the movie Coraline? No. Oh, this totally reminds me of a little garden scene in it. You should go watch it. It's visually stunning. It's nice. It's very pleasant. Oh. Oh no. What did you do? This is what I'm talking about. Where man-made stuff ruins the environment. But we didn't. We were lighting up flowers. (laughs) 
but we turned on the electricity and it burnt everything. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? I don't know. Call They're the They're going to blame us. All right. So I blame now we're gonna, Wait, oh, am I supposed to hit these? No, I'm not. Okay. Oh, we're going to the dark place. Uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Is there... <laughs> there's it's time like, to get spooky. There's some alien invasion stuff happening out there. Are we flying out to that thing? No, it's telling me not to. Okay. No, you got to go down that. Go down there. I was ready to fight. Oh, this is creepy. Oh, boy. Oh, this is like... Oh, we did um Unfinished Swan. There's a level in that that's kind of spooky where there's no lights. And you're only looking at, like, the light of the moon above you to travel through this little, like, path. That's some limbo stuff. Oh, this is like limbo. This is Matrix. This is the Matrix right here. <laughs> Machines. <laughs> go, we get into an underground cave and there's a rave going on. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Boy, what's that? An oh no, that's a flower. Oh, oh, in the sprawl of 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 construction. That's as far as it goes. It's now a barren wasteland. Or a dead wasteland. Oh, we got a pedal. That's probably from the um, little wagon wheel. Oh, is that in the middle? Maybe there's only one. That looks good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that dead one. Oh, oh no. shoot. I'm, I'm going into the next oh, scene. Well, well, come join us next time to see if we can um, make this gloomy weather not so gloomy. We're going to try. We'll try. We're going to try. We're going to try. We'll try our best. Well, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.